Hey Dan, what do you want to do today? I don't know, Mark. What do you want to do? Wait, I got it. Let's revolve me around the x-axis. Gee whiz! Let's do it! So Mark, how do you want to do this? Well, we can always paint our axes on the side of the house and then staple me to the house. Are you serious? No, 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 I, I have a better idea. Let's, let's use sidewalk chalk. We'll draw our axes on the driveway and then I can just trace you. Brilliant. Chalk me, Mark. You got it, Daniel. All right, here we go. All right, Mark, lay down in quadrant run. One. You gotta lengthen this a little. No, we only need the one side, though. This one's quadrant run. Yeah, quadrant run. One. Yes. I Just lay down. <laughs> All right, Mark, I labeled the quadrant for you. Now lay down in quadrant run one, please. Now reflect yourself over. Good job, Mark. All right, there you go, Mark. Wait, Dan. What's up? Disc method? or washer method. Washer method. Precisely. All right, Mark, well, I think it's our best bet to mimic your body's equation with the two equations, y equals x squared and y equals x cubed, just like this. And since we revolve me around the x-axis, you can say that our bounds would be from zero to one. However, that's equivalent to one x value of approximately four feet as we measured, and one y value of approximately five feet. Okay. Now, to solve this, since we're doing the washer method, we're gonna have to use the equation, volume equals pi times the integral from zero to one of big R squared minus little r squared dx. So, we're gonna have to figure out what our big R and little r well, are. Well, since x squared is farther, y equals x squared is farther away from the x-axis, that will be our big R equation, and since y equals x cubed is closer to the x-axis, that'll be our little r equation. You got it, Mark. Let's do this. Let's do this. Inside. All right, so here's our two equations, just like we drew outside. Mm -hmm. And we said our big R was what, Mark? Uh, y equals x squared. Okay. So big R equals x squared. Yeah. And little r is equal to? x cubed. All right. Now, so the equation for volume is V equals, and since they intersect at 0 and 1, it's going to be pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of big R squared minus little r squared dx. Am I right, Mark? You are correct. All right. Thank you, Mark. Now, we're going to plug and chug. Mm -hmm. So, V equals pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared squared, quantity squared, because it's bigger squared, minus x cubed squared dx. So, to simplify that out, that becomes pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of, what's x squared squared, Mark? x to the 4th. You got it. x to the 4th minus... x to the 6th. Good job. I'm proud of you, Mark. I'm proud of you. Thank you, Dan. dx. You should probably get a new marker. So, so yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's, let's switch Try to orange. orange. So, now we're going to integrate. 
Okay, Mark, so how do you integrate this? Well, you see, x to the fourth would become x to the five over five. Okay. And it would be that x to the sixth would become x to the seven over seven. And this is all times pi, correct? Correct. And now we solve from zero to one, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so tell me, Mark, what is, when you plug this in, what does this come out to be? Well, you're going to have one-fifth minus one-seventh. Okay. That, and put that in parentheses, minus, just minus zero. And this is all times pi still, right? Correct. Okay, so one-fifth minus one-seventh. I guess we got to find a common denominator, don't we, I Mark? I guess we do. I'd say 35 is a solid one. All right, so one-fifth when you change the denominator to 35 it is 7 35ths. Okay, 7 35ths minus 5 35ths. You got it. Times pi. So, our final answer is going to be mark 2 pi over 35. 2 pi what? 2 pi over 35 marks. Problem solved.